There are many ways to do a short row, but one of my favorites, in addition to German short row, is the twin stitch or the shadow wrap. So here I've worked my way to my turning point, and I'm going to show this to you for picking, throwing, and I'm also going to show it to you backwards. So I'm going to take my right needle and I'm going to do what is in essence a right lifted increase, which is I'm going to take the right needle and going from back to front, pick up the purl bump of the stitch on the left needle. So with the right needle, I'm going to go back to front and pick up the purl bump of the stitch on the right needle, and I'm going to put it on the needle and I'm going to knit that. That is my doubled stitch. Now I'm going to take the stitch I just worked on my right needle and I'm going to pass it to my left needle. So you can see and you can feel that there's two stitches coming out of one base. And now you're ready to turn. So now I'm gonna go ahead and purl my way to the last three stitches. So I've purled my way to my turning point, which is three stitches before the end of the row, and I'm ready to do what is basically a left lifted increase. So I'm going to begin by passing the first stitch on the left needle to the right needle. Then I'm gonna take the tip of my left needle and insert it into the purl bump of the stitch that I just passed to the right needle. And then I'm going to go ahead and purl it. And I have a doubled stitch on my right needle. I'm going to pass both stitches, the entire doubled stitch, which you can feel and see is coming from one purl bump, back to the left needle, and I can turn. And I'm ready to work my next short row. So this time I'm going to work it for continental. I'm going to go ahead and knit across until I'm three stitches before the last doubled stitch. Now if you are using thinner yarn, you could always put a stitch marker right at the doubled stitch, but you can actually see how easy it is to see that. Um, you can feel each single stitch and then oh, there's my doubled stitch, but if it helps you, when you do your shadow wrap, you can put in a stitch marker right after your doubled stitch and it'll kind of slow you down. So here I am to three stitches before my last double and we'll take a look at that right lifted increase this time for continental. It's the same, but I always like to share the love. I'm going to once again take the tip of my right needle and go back to front into the purl bump of the stitch on my left needle, pop that purl bump onto my left needle, knit it, then pass that stitch that I just created back to the left needle, and there's my doubled stitch. And I will turn and I will purl to three stitches before the last doubled. And then we'll take a look at that one more time for continental, and then we'll look at it backwards. I've put in some locking stitch markers so you can see what I mean because there I can feel and see clearly one, two, three stitches before the last doubled stitch. Now obviously I'm using locking stitch markers because I would want to then take that stitch marker out and move it to the front of the next doubled stitch. So here I go. This is basically a left lifted increase. So I'm going to begin by passing the first stitch from the left needle onto the right needle. Now I'm going to take the tip of my right, excuse me, my left needle and pick up the purl bump of the stitch that I just passed. And I will then purl that purl bump. Now I will pass the doubled stitch back to the left needle and turn. And if I wanted to, I could pop on a locking stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and work across and do one more 
doubled stitch, and then I'm going to work my way backwards. Here I've knit to three stitches before my last doubled, and you know the routine. Take the tip of your right needle, pick up the purl bump of the first stitch on the left needle, knit that purl bump, pass the new stitch back to the left needle, place your marker if you'd like, and there's your doubled stitch. But what I wanted to look at is the purl double stitch backwards. So this is extra credit if you happen to be a backwards knitter. So when you're doing this backwards, you can see even clearer that it truly is a left lifted increase. So there I am, I'm three stitches before the marker, and I love these big markers because you, you, really, um, you can really feel them and see them so easily. So there I take that guy out, and here I am working backwards. So I'm going to begin the same way. I'm going to pass the unworked stitch. So if you remember, when we were moving forward, what we did was we passed the uh, first stitch from the left-hand needle to the right-hand needle. So all you want to remember is, oh yeah, if I'm moving backwards, what I'm doing is I'm passing the stitch that I have yet to work. So I'm passing the stitch that I have yet to work. Now I'm going to lift up that purl bump, moving back to front with my right-hand needle. So I'm going to take my right-hand needle and I'm going to lift up that purl bump and I'm going to put it onto the left-hand needle and I'm going to purl it. Then I would pass that doubled stitch back and I'd be ready to go. So I'm going to show that to you one more time for my backwards knitters. And remember, anything you do forwards, you can teach yourself to do backwards by simply turning around and thinking about it thinking, okay, what did I do? Well, I slipped the first stitch from the left needle to the right needle. Okay, what does that look like from behind? Oh, it's slipping the first unworked stitch over. Okay, now what did I do? Well, I took the left needle and I picked up that purl bump of the stitch I just slipped and I purled it. So turn that around, see what that looks like. Ah, okay. So, backwards, that means I'm putting the right needle back to front into the purl bump of the stitch I've just passed, put it on my needle, and purl it backwards. Slip them both back to where they were, and place your marker. Ta-da! So now we have to hide these wraps, and that's where shadow wraps are really fun. No thinking about how you hide them, not unlike German short rows. All you do is work the doubled stitch as if it was one stitch. So again, if you have a marker, then you can remove the marker, and there's that doubled stitch, and you knit them together. Now here I was moving the marker each time, but if, if you want, you could put a marker at each one if that helps you find them. But um, I also know that I can both see and feel them. I can feel them with my finger. There's, a, there's clear as day two stitch heads coming out of one, and I will knit those two together, and I can feel one and see one. I can see and feel one, and whoop! There's a doubled stitch, and I knit them together. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to purl back, and I'll meet you at the doubled stitch. So whether I'm not, I'm using a stitch marker to mark it. The stitch marker I can definitely see and feel, but really I can also see and feel that doubled stitch. So um, I want you to get used to that. Here I have you know bright orange yarn, and it's giant and chunky. But even if you had black Angora yarn, you'll still be able to find those doubled stitches. And when you get to them, no fancy footwork. You just work them as if they were one stitch. And that's what I love about shadow wrap. So you might hear this called shadow wrap. You might hear this called twin stitch. 
but those little doubled stitches, you simply work them as if there were one stitch. And let's pull this down to the cable and see what we get. Of course, with short rows, what we're doing is we're working the row short. So you can see those stitches in the middle, well, they've been worked for more rows than the stitches at the edge. And so we have a shape. There you go, shadow wraps. Enjoy.